Home One was one of the most famous ships in the entire galaxy, leading the forces of the Alliance Navy at the Battle of Endor and commanded by the faction's greatest military leader. However, as the Rebel Alliance reformed into the New Republic, the Navy began a major upscaling and modernization effort. Mon Calamari cruisers were, during the days of the Alliance, the most powerful capital ships used by the Rebels. New Republic High Command sought to make Mon Cal's not only the most powerful ship, within the Navy, but the true backbone of the Republic Space Force, available in equal numbers to smaller ships. But that was only the expansion. I also mentioned modernization. The New Republic eventually introduced two new Mon Cal ship types, the MC-80B and the MC-90, the latter which was the first dedicated warship of its class, compared to the older MC-80 variants which were refitted civilian, merchant, or transport ships. The MC-90, however, had a long development time, and Akbar continued to command New Republic forces from the Home One, most notably succeeding against Thrawn at the Battle of Bilbringi, while also pushing back against Imperial Warlords and capturing planets. And it's very likely that as this was happening, the Home One was upgraded and improved, especially as the New Republic secured advanced shipyards across the galaxy. However, although Akbar did have some minor issues with the MC-90 design, and the ship wasn't produced specifically for the Mon Cal species like the MC-80, some time before the Dark Empire Crisis, Akbar moved his flag to the new ship line, specifically the first completed vessel, the Defiance. However, he only used the Defiance for a short period and soon moved on to his second most famous flagship, the Galactic Voyager. The Voyager was first introduced in Book 3 of the Jedi Academy trilogy, where it very easily outgunned an Imperial Dreadnought heavy cruiser. However, it much more prominently featured in Darksaber, where it participated in the defense of Yavin 4 against Natasi Dalla's overwhelming force. In that book, it's described as an enormous Calamarian star cruiser and one of the largest and most powerful ships in the New Republic fleet. It's also explained that the Galactic Voyager specifically was chosen as Akbar's flagship because he preferred its configuration compared to other MC-90s, which again, were all uniquely designed. At Yavin, the MC-90 and an escort of Corellian Corvettes went against the Super Star Destroyer Nighthammer and its escort fleet, including 20 victories from the Crimson Command, which joined mid-battle. While powerful, the Galactic Voyager obviously could not stand up to the Nighthammer by itself, but it still managed to take pressure off the planetary invasion and survive while retreating. The 20 Star Destroyers of the Crimson Command engaged the Galactic Voyager at close range, having joined mid battle via hyperspace jump, and Akbar not only survived, but his small task force was able to destroy at least three of the victories. What's more, the Galactic Voyager survived long enough for the Nighthammer to be destroyed from the inside, and for a New Republic task force to arrive, reinforcing him against the victories. For general notes about the MC-90, they were more powerful than most Star Destroyers, but smaller, at about 1.3 kilometers. They combined Mon Calamari shielding and design principles with, for perhaps the first time, time powerful turbo lasers. As I mentioned, they were the first purpose-built Mon Calamari warship and were used until the Yuuzhan Vong War, the Legacy of the Force era, and beyond. The death of Dalla was not only a real, but also a symbolic loss to the Empire. Dalla had unified several warlord factions only to throw away a Super Star Destroyer. Likely because of this, Akbar largely moved away from direct battle command, instead settling into the more administrative and grand strategic responsibilities associated with being the New Republic's Supreme Commander. He oversaw the formation of the Fifth Fleet and likely the new class generally. However, during the Orinda campaign, he moved back into direct service, this time commanding not the Home One or the Galactic Voyager, but rather the captured Super Star Destroyer Guardian. As for the Voyager, it survived the Yuuzhan Vong War, and was still used by the now Galactic Alliance at least until the Second Galactic Civil War. And in fact, it was actually chosen by Mon Calamari Admiral Cha Nyathal as her personal flagship during the blockade of Corellia, and it's described in Legacy of the Force Exile as aged but still mighty. Luke, however, wonders whether Nyathal is only using the ship to associate herself with the much-loved Akbar. 
As for the Home 1 and the Defiance, we don't know exactly what happened to either of these ships, though the latter may have been destroyed along with Pinnacle Station. It's quite likely that the Home 1 was simply retired or brought into some sort of ceremonial role. The Guardian, as one of the New Republic's only dreadnoughts, was a very important asset during the Yuuzhan Vong War. However, it was not commanded directly by Admiral Akbar, who was very old at this point and instead was only providing grand strategy. Anyway, those are the flagships of Admiral Akbar after the Home One. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. Today's hashtag ask ek question of the day comes from TK5763, who asks about my favorite Star Wars Legends book or trilogy. Well, I really love the Thrawn trilogy because to me, it best feels like an extension of the original trilogy in both scope, as well as atmosphere, but I also love the X-Wing series, I love the Thrawn duology. Right now I'm rereading Legacy of the Forest and I'm enjoying it a lot more than I expected to, but it's probably not my favorite. I also really, really like the quasi trilogy of Labyrinth of Evil, Revenge of the Sith, and The Rise of Darth Vader, and I talk about the latter two a lot on this channel. I highly recommend reading them, or at least the Revenge of the Sith novelization. As a kid, I really liked the Young Jedi Knight series, and as for one-off books, I'm a fan of the Outbound Flight and especially Plagueis, among many, many others. Again, let me know what you guys like down in the comments, and if there's a question you'd like to see me answer quickly at the end of one of my videos, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Anyway, thanks for joining me today, guys. Really appreciate it. If you want more Eckhart's Letter content, follow me on Twitch. I'll probably be streaming Empire War tonight. Consider dropping a follow as well on Twitter and Instagram. Anyway, until next time, this has been Eckhart's Letter. May the Force be with you.